Hello everyone! Welcome back to another exciting episode. I'm your host, Sunny from India. This week, I want to introduce to you a small American student from the state of West Virginia. His name is Omar James. Two years ago, we met on a social media platform for language exchange. At that time, Omar was trying to learn more about Indian languages like Malayalam, Telugu, and Hindi, and uh, Indian culture and history. Even before that, he had been to Mexico to learn Spanish. He had been to Brazil to learn Portuguese. So right now he is, uh, I think he is fluent in all these uh, like Spanish and uh, Portuguese. Right now, two years later, we meet him in another unexpected place. Well, that is Egypt, the land of pharaohs. When we, when we think of Egypt, Egypt brings a lot of, you know, unforgettable memories to me because I had my first uh, trip abroad to Egypt 20 years ago. At that time, I was fortunate enough to visit three countries, Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. I still remember visiting those, uh, what do you call, iconic buildings like or monuments like uh, the Great Pyramid at Giza, then uh, Sphinx, Alexandria, all these places. And later, uh, I visited uh, Jerusalem, <clears throat> the capital of Israel. If you ask me to name one of my favorite places on earth, I would definitely suggest Jerusalem or Israel generally. You have got to be there to believe it. Okay, so let's welcome our guest, Omar James from West Virginia. Okay, Omar, welcome back to our great show. I think it's it's been two years since we met last time. Yeah, we actually met a little bit over two years. I remember I met you back when I was living in Brazil. And I was there um, from January 2019 to June 2019. I was there for five months. And I remember I met you uh, in the month of May because I, I was actually traveling somewhere else in Brazil for my vacation. And I remember I got your message when I was in this place called Florianópolis in this in the southern part of Brazil. And we uh, became friends instantly right after that. And we began practicing Malayalam all the time. And yeah, I remember. So it was about it was about, I would say, two years and about um, five or four months. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. <clears throat> Well, you know, I, I'm just wondering, how do you keep all these languages uh, in your brain? How do you, <laughs> I, I'm just, I just don't understand because right now you're fluent in, you know, like four languages, aren't you? Yes, yes. And I like getting the question, how do I um, keep them all? It's, it is kind of hard to retain them. Um, I feel like they're always going to be there. I feel like when we learn a language, when we, we reach a certain point where no matter how long you spend away from it, it will never go. You may feel a little rusty in it, but you will not lose it to an extent to where, for example, I learned Telugu only when I was living in Hyderabad. But if I don't use it for over a year, I may, I may lose a lot of it. So I, I know that you, like me, are a globe trotter, you know. So right now you are in Egypt. So tell us something about your Egyptian experience. Like, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So um, I came back in August, and I've been here now October. So about um, two months. Um, you know, I really 
really love living here in Egypt. The people here are so welcoming to foreigners. They're really, they, they really make you feel like you're at home. Uh, the food is different. The food is, um, uh, is um, it's really good. Um, <laughs> I think, but I think the highlight of my experience has had has been the hospital, the the hospitality of, of the people here. You know, they're 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 really kind and they really go out of their way to help you. Well, I, I know that you are doing uh, your masters in international relations. Uh, so, why did you choose that career? What was in your mind? Yeah, with you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I did my bachelor's degree in translation and interpreting, but throughout my bachelor's degree, I got the chance to study abroad four times. So I did a semester in India, semester in Brazil, a winter in Cuba, and a summer in Mexico. And I, while traveling, I just became really interested in the world. And I really felt like a global citizen. And I knew that if I just remained in the translation field, I would really kind of only be uh, restricted to working within the USA because I was trying to, I, at first I wanted to do court and uh, courtroom interpreting and that would have kept me, you know, in the US and I didn't want that. But after traveling, I knew I wanted to do something on a more global level. I wanted to make a global impact. Okay, so, so far <clears throat> we were talking about your Egyptian experience. Now let's go back home to your home state, uh, West Virginia. How do you, how would you like to view yourself as a, as a citizen of the United States? Like, you know, a new generation student. What do you find yourself in all those things? Do you think that you should be judged not by your color, the skin of your color or the length of your hair, but by your, your merit as a human being? Uh, by your character. So uh, I would like to know what goes through your mind because you have been to a lot of places in the world. You have met a lot of people, people from different races, from different languages. So when it comes down to the basics, how do you uh, like to, to be seen by other people? Yeah, absolutely. Before starting, uh... To answer, I want to say, so I'm from Virginia, not West Virginia. And I think you also mentioned that in your other video a year ago. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just one little thing. I'm from Virginia. But other than that, um, how do I want to be viewed? I love that question because um, I think, you know, traveling, um, I really started to see how people view Americans and they kind of put us all in this one box. And um, I actually think the diversity of the U.S. is one of our biggest strengths. You know, I would rather before um, uh, not just being viewed as an American, but, you know, I, I mean, I would rather be viewed as a Black American and an African American, which actually is a confusing concept to some people abroad. They will think, well, why do you want to be called a color? You know, being Black in America is not just a color, it's actually an experience. And I think at the end of the day, you have people who would rather be viewed as, I'm just American, I'm just American. But I feel like when you want to be viewed as just American, you want to be put in this one box, one box fits all. And I actually think there's actually uh, power in, in being able to say, I'm, a, I'm an American, but I don't follow the same American experience. And I think having this distinction, whether you're African American, European American, white or black, it, 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 it you're regarding your story, you're regarding your, your experience, you know, because all the American ex uh, experience is not just one experience. And I think, um, you know, I've had to explain that to people while traveling, you know, um, uh, people will say like, well, you're just all American at the end of the day. Well, you know, and it's kind of disregarding the fact that there's so many different experiences. There's not just one sole American experience. And so for me, I like being viewed as a Black American. When you say that, you don't want to give up your roots. You want to hold on to your roots, your identity. Okay, I agree with you on that. But I think whether you are a Black American or a Latino or an Asian or an American or white American, whatever be the case, 
Don't you think that we all need to have some, some values that keep us together? Without values, do you think that we can, as a human race, can make great progress? Absolutely. You know, uh, I think the fund the the foundational part about it is values. I think it, it, it is kind of a bit subjective because, you know, values may differ amongst, you know, different people and different cultures. Um, but I think understanding your values and from where you grew up, I think it adds a lot more um, uniqueness to your story, which is why, you know, you're right when you say, when you kind of take away the black and white and Latino aspect, there are certain values that we should all just have as human beings. You know, I just think when you um, attach, you know, your ethnic or cultural uh, uh, background to it, it kind of adds more uniqueness to your story. And I think each story deserves uh, to be regarded in that manner that you, at the end of the day, we do have these fundamental values and uh, principles but uh, there is something unique about your uh, about your experience and your culture and and, and where you, and, and your background that does uh, you know it's it it's it gives your story strength you know what I mean it it really gives your story strength so yeah I think you're um, I agree with you one hundred percent okay uh, Omar uh, I think we have come to the end of our interview and I thank you so much for your wonderful uh, participation and hope to see you again. Mr. Sun, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate, um, you know, every time you invite me to do something with you, I really appreciate that. This is my second time on your channel and I really appreciate uh, you inviting me to be a part of your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. That's all we have time for this week. Hope you enjoyed our show. Next week, I'll definitely bring another great show for you. Until then, goodbye. Oh, yeah.